I think there is some scope for regulation uh, in high, highly sophisticated areas where there are um, w where we have proprietary patents or proprietary uh, um, control over you know uh, over components or, 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 or equipment that can be used for that could violate security uh, issues. But I think it's. Uh, it, right now, it's too vastly interpreted. There's, it needs to be reviewed. Um, I think that the argument for reducing export controls would be better received if it were put forward by people other than the Chinese government. Uh, it's, I think the fact that, that China is the biggest proponent of it raises, raises eyebrows. Um, but I would agree that you know, much of what is regulated and restricted under our export control regime need not be because other, other countries produce these products and other and countries can ha have access to that elsewhere. So yes, we, we, need to, we need to err on the side of openness and really come up with good reasons for restrictions on, in both directions. Um, you know, so far since the, since the internet revolution, uh, re regulation has been relatively benign, I think could be a lot, a, a lot worse than these, these kinds of products that, that, that don't require transport, that, they, that go over, uh, over telephone lines. Um, but I mean, I'm not looking for ways for the WTO to uh, ex ex expand its reach or for, or, or for governments to, to find new industries to regulate. I think it's an example for where, the way the world should operate, right? There's more, there's more of a free flow of, uh, of, of software code. There's a more of a, there's, there are a few, it seems to me there are fewer barriers in the industry that you're describing. I mean, I, I think in a, in a world that is capital constrained, it should certainly be. Uh, there should be a, uh, uh, a movement toward that. We need to, let's not think in terms, let's not think exclusively about whether we want foreigners owning our assets, uh, we should think about the domestic asset holders and how the foreigners bidding on those assets drives up the value of them. You know, if, if, if U.S. industries or European industries or Russian industries are off limits to foreign purchases, even if they're governments, then the asset holders are deprived of, uh, of, of, of the market, really. They're deprived of, of bidders. They're, they're gonna have to take a, a, a smaller price for it, lower price for it. The U.S. Uh, foreign investment debate um, really was raging for a couple of years after the Dubai Ports World thing and then the, uh, the, the Unical, the Sinoc Unical, Ch the Chinese oil company. Um, and it was way, way too political. I, I don't think either of those should have been um, snu uh, snuffed out. And we have revamped our CFIUS, Committee on Foreign uh, Investment in the United States, rules about what is and what is not a, a, a doable investment. Um, I, I think we, uh, we, we, we need to really limit uh, the, the occasions in which we intervene and say that you can't buy this. Uh, we had a big debate in Cato about sovereign wealth funds when they were, when that was big talk back in like 2000, maybe 2008, last year. Uh, and and I, uh, my view was we should be in, uh, accepting of, of Chinese sovereign wealth fund investment in the United States. Um, because it helps uh, secure the asset values for American holders of those assets. Uh, and there's no real history where, where if, we're, if we're intervening to, to block this, it, we're, we're basing it on superstition and suspicion rather than any real world evidence that sovereign wealth funds act, you know, government owned funds act in, in, a, in a different way than, than the private sector, private actors. Well, I, I, I don't know that I accept that, that, that premise. Uh, I, I would say that there is, there are, there, well, uh, I've heard others blame the U.S. <laughs> the U.S. Uh, uh, cotton industry for, uh, for that as well. Um, trade is important. It's important to African growth, uh, but it's certainly not a panacea, right? Some, some of these countries, um, can be open to trade, can be, have access to all markets in the world, but because there aren't, there's no developed infrastructure, uh, because people don't really respect property, they don't respect the rule of law, uh, you're not going to get that, any kinds of investment. Um, 
I, my view is that we don't, industry, countries don't need to think about uh, infant industry protection. They don't need to think about building industries up uh, from the bottom up. Because of this global, globalization of supply chains, they can carve out a niche or, or, or a piece of that market. Um, the, uh, there's got to be a niche for Ghanaian clothing producers. There was a niche for Cambodian clothing producers. They uh, were worried about uh, the end of the quota system and how they were going to be overrun by, by Chinese clothing products. And they, you know, whether you subscribe to this approach or not, they, they said, you know what, we're going to appeal to the big brands around the world because big brands are, 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 are profit seekers and uh, it's in their self-interest to make sure that we don't use uh, child labor, we don't abuse labor, we don't despoil the environment. So the Cambodians uh, marketed themselves as a place where ILO standards are not only met but exceeded. And as a result, I think it attracted uh, much more investment from Western brands because uh, they, don't, they don't want the bad press that comes with, with, uh, with, with labor violations, which I would say are really the exception and not the rule. Um, um, but anyway, there are ways to carve out niches. I, I, I don't know how to speak specifically to that. If the Chinese are able to produce uh, at a uh, more competitive price than the Ghanaians, which I find hard to believe, I mean, maybe they can with their, if they're subsidized and there's big, big uh, economies of scale. But why would the Chinese continue to subsidize a low value added industry like that for export to Africa? I don't know. The, it's probably case specific and the, the, they'll have to figure out what their niche is.